thank you, Christian. And so why is street-based sex work still criminalised? Mm. <laughs> it, it should be decriminalised like all of the sex industry throughout Australia. So now I'd like to welcome Kane <laughs> Matthews back to the stage. So welcome Kane. Um, as T said, I'm Kane Matthews, and like everyone else, I too am a sex worker. And like Tish told you when you're introducing me, I am a sex worker who is with HIV. And by the way, I only work in Sydney, but it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> to give some context to this, I've done sex work since I was 16, and on and off again over the years. Since zero converting, I've personally chosen to provide my sexual services as an openly had to be positive sex worker, exclusively to a gay men with HIV. I'll presume that no one here would necessarily have an issue with that to hate positive people having sex. <laughs> That's a normal. And just like for other people with HIV, disclosure is a personal choice for sex workers, and that should, should remain a personal choice. Here in the NCT, if a HIV positive gay man were to engage my services, we would both be breaking the law, and we could both face possible giant fines and or jail. And I'll come to that later. Firstly, what is the ideal legislative framework for HIV prevention and management in Australia. Strangely, we can look to the ACT for this, which probably has the best practice framework for non-sex working people with HIV and those at risk. This framework is based on protecting people who know they have HIV from stigma and discrimination, promoting voluntary testing and treatment through the removal of legal barriers and reducing the negative impacts of a positive HIV test result. In the ACT, people with HIV are protected from stigma and discrimination through not being required to disclose our HIV status, ever. This includes our sexual partners. Just because someone finds us attractive enough to have sex with us does not mean that they'll automatically be okay with the knowledge of our HIV status and once knowing that, they protect our privacy for the rest of our lives on our behalf. Also, if you're about to test for HIV and were worried about it and you knew that you would probably have a lot of difficulty in finding a partner because if you knew your status and weren't required to disclose your status to all your potential sexual partners, this is a logical deterrent. Testing. For the rare cases where someone who knows they have HIV and intentionally places others at risk, the ACT has signed up to a document called the National Guidelines for the Management of People with HIV who place others at risk. All the Australian states and territories now have this document in place. This is an increasing level of intervention type of approach with the management provided by health practitioners. As a last resort, the ACT also has criminal legislation covering the intentional transmission through the current provisions of the Crimes Act. But, and here's the big but, if money exchanges hands in the ACT, then the person with HIV becomes a criminal. And this is despite safe sex. And this is what I want to make clear. Having safe sex in the ACT is a criminal offence for people with HIV if money is included. So for me, if I was to visit the ACT with one of my clients, we would both be criminals under this, this law. Now you think, well, these laws would never be used. The public health strategies are in place, the management guidelines are in place, everyone knows how it all works now, these outdated laws are just going to be applied. And that's wrong, <laughs> because as one of us here going. Last year, a local ACT sex worker was charged with these laws. The media had an absolute field day with the issue, and the ACT Health Department supported the media through an attempt to find his clients who had supposedly been put at risk. And we saw nine months of absolute disastrous help as a result. And that's just how it all goes wrong. Because safe sex is criminalised, all the various people involved feel that it's then okay to target this person, to expose this person, and to publicise his details. They felt that it was okay to make an example of him and thought that it was in the public interest to do so. In this case, the court could not prove that he had ever had unsafe sex. ACT did not find anyone who had acquired HIV from him, so no transmission had occurred. But somehow, Mr. did not stop, stop the proceedings. As a message to others, the judge sentenced him to a two and a half month term in jail, during which, by the way, he was assaulted. The message the judge sent was received loud and clear. Local sex workers stopped attending the sexual health outreach club arranged by Swap ACT. Attendance went from 40 down to about 2. The actions of ACT Health, police and the judge directly caused this effect. 
This also occurred during the life of the needs assessment that I was conducting. So I was able to measure the impact of this on other HIV positive sex workers around Australia. The impact was they felt targeted by this action too. They were not going to stop working, but they were going to be more cautious and more underground. For them, this means less support from services they receive and less support from medical support. They cannot disclose what they do to their doctors and they cannot receive appropriate medical advice. This impact was the same regardless of whether the laws in those states where they worked was criminalised or whether HIV positive sex workers were permitted to work. This is a clear example of what not to do and why. The criminalisation of HIV supports the stigma and discrimination towards people with HIV, in particular sex workers with HIV. It fosters all the negative stereotypes and try hard to break down. The federal government spends millions each year in successfully encouraging voluntary testing and treatment and preventing significant levels of HIV transmission as a result. Here in the ACT, for sex workers, for us, you are far from the best practice model for HIV prevention and management. These laws need to change because they justify the ongoing harassment and discrimination towards us sex workers who live with HIV. The people who do this, the doctors, the nurses, the health department, the police, the judges, and even the non-sex worker HIV sector workers are empowered by these laws to continue the stigma towards us. This undermines the whole national HIV strategy being implemented and funded and it needs to change now.